So this week, it is Belgium's tragedy. Last week, it was Turkey. It's becoming increasingly clear this kind of terror recognises no particular target, no state, no end, no aim. So what tools do we have to fight what is essentially endless random acts knitted clumsily together in the name of jihad? I asked the French philosopher Bernard-Henri Lévy, who's just returned from the front line of Kurdistan, where he's been making a film about the Peshmerga. I asked him if he saw this as a war. It was a symbol with Charlie. It was a war with Bataclan, and it is general war now with Brussels. It's a sort of um, continental state of emergency. Uh, Europe is living now in state of emergency, not only France. It is not only war, it is general war. This is the first point after what happened in Brussels. Brussels is a new scale. There was a will in, in Brussels to terrorize an entire city to stop the life of the city. You know, all the fascists in history, they, they commit genocide. These fascists, ISIS, they commit, they want to commit genocide too, but maybe also, I don't know how to say it, metrocide, urbicide, killing the cities. Because city means civility, means citizenship, means uh, uh, spirit of cosmopolitanism, spirit, uh, cities as itself is a, is, a, is a great idea. And this is the idea they hate. And how do you fight that? We always hear people saying, we'll be brave, we won't be cowed, we'll carry on. But of course, underneath all the rhetoric, there is fear and people do change how they live. The only way to, to wage this battle, I feel, is to go to the core to go to the brain of this war, the core, the brain, which is between Iraq and Syria. ISIS, very different from Al-Qaeda because they have, they mix the two models, the, the two patterns, the two paradigmas, the paradigm of terror without state and the paradigm of terror with the state. They mix, they join the two models. This is their strength. This is why it is a new scale compared to Al-Qaeda. So there is a state, a so-called so state, Islamic state. The only way we have today, we, the West, to, fight, to defeat them is to hit uh, in their state there. This is the only, I don't say it will be a mir miracle solution. You, we, we, st we will still have, uh, as a duck which continues to live even when he has no head, terrorists will continue. But if we if we destroy the headquarters, if we destroy the training camps, if we destroy the, the people who give orders and who planify, plan, who plan Brussels, Paris, yesterday London, hopefully not, maybe today, tomorrow. If we destroy the heart, if we destroy the, the, the master plan, uh, it will be the beginning of the defeat for, for ISIS. Many will remember you were passionate about aiding the Libyan rebels mm -hmm. at one stage. When you look at Libya without Gaddafi, does that seem to you an improved situation? Of course. Of this course. is better now. Uh, of course. The, the real comparison to do is Libya, where we, English and French, intervened, and Syria, when we washed our hands. What happened in Syria? The country is empty. Millions of refugees, destabilization of Lebanon, of Turkey, of Europe. But Libya is the next one. That's going to be the next part of ISIS. Let's see. For the moment, it is not. ISIS was born in Iraq and in Syria, as far as I know, not in Libya. They are trying to go now in Libya. But the real um, uh, core of ISIS is in Syria and in Iraq. If in August 2013, the English parliament on one side and Barack Obama on the other side had not stopped the will of David Cameron and of Hollande to punish Bashar al-Assad at the moment of the use of chemical weapons, there will probably not be ISIS. There will probably not be these millions of poor people flying the, the war and the misery and the bombing of the two sides, and there will be less terrorism. On a personal note, you were targeted by Belgian extremists, your own life was under threat. Do you, do you understand why you became that target? You know, I became a target uh, like uh, like so many like so many people. 
when you are vocal against these uh, these people, you are inevitably a target. What they cannot stand is somebody who says that Islam as such is not evil. Somebody who says that there is a good Islam, that this good Islam should be reinforced. This is more intolerable for, for ISIS probably than the 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 uh, one single-minded redneck who would say Islam as, as itself. You know, Donald Trump, they don't care. Donald Trump is the ally, in a way, intellectually, uh, of these people of ISIS. They will never have a, uh, an argument with a Dona Donald Trump as a symbol. ISIS pleads for the war of civilization. ISIS, the, the idea of ISIS is that Islam as a bloc should be against the West as a bloc. They try to gather all the Muslims of the world under the, their black uh, flag in order to fight the West as a bloc. There is some people in the West who say exactly the same thing, that there, would be, there should be a bloc against bloc ideological battle between Islam as such and West as such. There is two symmetrical risks. Uh, first risk is to say that uh, uh, jihad represents all Islam. This is horrible, false, and it is a crime against spirit to say that, to mix Islam and Islamism. But there is a symmetrical thought, which is to say that Islamism, jihadism, has nothing to do with Islam. It is, it is not true. The, the nothing to, the nothing to doism, a huh? uh, new ideology which is the nothing to do. This is crazy. Of course it has something to do. Jihadism, Islamism with Islam, jihadism with Quran. It has something to do, but what exactly? What does he have to do with? This is the question which has to be addressed to the wisest Muslims themselves. Does it feel as if Europe is in trouble now? Do you think of it as a as a continent or a union uh, in trouble? U U Europe might be dying today, might be in the process of dying. Yeah. Uh, the big mistake of, the, of um, our gener my generation has been to, to believe that Europe was done, that it was a done job, it was finished, that it was inscribed, written in the sense of history, and that whatever happens, it will remain and go to the end. Not true. There is no sense of history. There is a forward, backward. And now there is clearly a collapse scenario with, uh, with Greece, with the Brexit, if it, uh, if it happens, uh, with the crisis of uh, the refugees, with the, the borders and so on. There is a collapse scenario, which, we, which would mean for European peoples more unemployment, more misery, and uh, and more crisis, yeah. But there is, it is a credible, it, a credible scenario today, alas. And you see Brexit as a, a part of that? I think Brexit will be, uh, yes, will be part of that. Brexit would be bad. My feeling, I'm not an economist, but I know enough. I think it would not be good for British people, uh, and it will not be good for Europe, and it will it will be one more signal for Europe as a, as a whole of deconstruction of its uh, founding uh, stones. What would be a Europe without England? Bernard Henry Levy uh, speaking to me this afternoon. Well, that's it from us. But we leave you here in London and a gesture of solidarity and the people of Brussels as the capital's landmarks light up in the colours of the Belgian flag. Good night from all of us.